Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. The Caribbean island known to many as Little England finally severed ties with Great Britain and becomes a republic. This story takes the lead in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Wednesday 1st December 2021. Details when we return. Conveniently located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center, for over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen, now, I need you to go down to Food Fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going food fair to get a grocery, man. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the food fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just to log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand. And with an order of $100 or more, food fair granites will deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. The safety measures are excellent. So hold on. You just order online and food fair will deliver to you? Yep. Oh baby, better hurry up and order, man. I already did. This should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. Welcome back. Barbados became a republic during the first minute after midnight on Monday on its 55th anniversary of independence. The occasion was attended by a special guest of honor, Prince Charles of Britain, heir to the throne and future leader of the Commonwealth, who arrived safely on Sunday night and was received by President-elect at the time, Dame Sandra Mason, and Prime Minister Mia Motley and other high-ranking government officials. Let's take in a comprehensive report from Barbados today. Prince Charles was accorded a red carpet welcome with full military honors, which included a 21-gun salute. On Tuesday, Prince Charles will receive the country's second highest honor, the Order of Freedom. Ahead of the historic moment and the country's 55th anniversary of independence, a leading Anglican cleric has urged Barbadians to stay true to the country's long-held values. Delivering the featured address at the National Service of Thanksgiving held at the Garfield Sobers Gymnasium, Senator the Reverend Dr. John Rogers delivered a message of hope, acknowledging that while the country has faced tough times triggered by the COVID-19 pandemic, it has triumphed before and it will do so again. If we are going to overcome the adversity of our time, we must remember how we got here. That it was not always an easy road. There was a struggle. Even as we go through this pandemic, we are being called to remember that there will be times of plenty and there will be times of need. That's what we sing in our national anthem. But we can overcome it because others before us went through this as well. This is not the first pandemic Barbados has faced. In 1854, when we faced the cholera pandemic, churches and places of business were closed for eight months. They had no internet, no tablets, no telephone, nothing. But just to tell you about resilience, Another major highlight of this year's independent celebrations was the official opening of the Golden Square Freedom Park at the weekend. Founder of the Climate Pain Movement and CARICOM Ambassador David Comenshong described the occasion as a great one for him and the members and supporters of the movement who labored diligently to have the area recognized. I am going to make this spot the mecca of organization in this island. Bad things have been said about Golden Square, but I have found my services better appreciated here than elsewhere in this island." End of quote. The challenge to us now is to play our part in helping to realize Clement Payne's vision 
by embracing this magnificent two-acre Golden Square Freedom Park and making it the mecca of civic engagement, public education, participatory citizenship, conscious artistic expression, and progressive and even revolutionary consciousness in the new Republic of Barbados. Prime Minister Mia Motley told the ceremony that the long-awaited construction of the Hyatt Centric Resort, expected to benefit the area, is likely to start early next year. At the same time, we have before us approvals or different stages of development running from across the road where I anticipate that early in the new year the Hyatt Hotel will start. Or further down, where I anticipate on the pier head that that project will also start. And the other works that are already out to tender for the Treasury Building, which we believe must be that place where young Barbadians and not so young Barbadians can take to living in the center of town so that we can bring back life to Bridgetown fully along across all classes and all places. Antigua and Barbuda's Foreign Minister Chet Green congratulated Barbados on transition to a republic. Rakib Aparisi of ABS News reports. Foreign Affairs Minister the Honorable E.P. Chet Green congratulates Barbados on deciding to move away from the Queen as head of state and becoming the world's newest republic. And so this is a most fulcrum moment for Barbados. Um, that moment when the, the loyalty of the Majesty the Queen is no longer the issue. It is about um, you know, Barbados being fully sovereign. So I just want to commend Barbados on, on making the move at the stage. Heir to the British throne, Charles, Prince of Wales, is on hand to participate in the ceremonial activities. Governor General of Barbados, Dame Sandra Mason, will become the Republic's first president and replace the Queen as head of state. Minister Green believes this is a logical step for countries across the region, looking to shed their colonial past and chart their own destinies. We're going to see more and more Caribbean countries going that direction. Um, the whole question of sovereignty, um, dropping the, 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 the monarchy as head of state, it is something that has been talked about in the Caribbean since the independence movement. The latest move by Barbados is stirring discourse in constitutional monarchies across the region. But what of Antigua and Barbuda's future on this issue? The Foreign Affairs Minister says he is in favor of the country becoming a republic. However, he adds it is a long journey. You know, what they are doing there, what we will do here eventually, I'm, I'm, I am afraid I'm alive when it happens, will be taking our sovereignty one step further. And with that level of sovereignty, it calls for a level of responsibility on the part of the, of the citizenry. And so it, it is not a, a, a single, simple um, arrangement. Rakib Aparicio reporting for ABS News. Hurricane season is now upon us, so we as Caribbean people need to remember to think safety and be prepared. Avoid venturing outside during a storm or hurricane, especially if there are strong winds. Rooftops and other debris are often blown about and can cause great damage. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. The St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association and Acting Prime Minister Dr. Ernest Hilaire are encouraging vaccination and strict adherence to the infection prevention and control measures as the best way to combat the spread of the recently emerged Omicron variant. Countries the world over have imposed stricter measures in response, including banning travel from countries where the variant has been detected. More in this DBS News World Report. According to the new statutory instrument issued on Friday, November 26, 2021, protocols for the festive season will generally remain the same. Confinement hours will start at 10 p.m. on weekdays and Saturdays, and at 5 p.m. on Sundays, ending at 4 a.m. the next day. 
The only major change to the protocols is the increased passenger load of 12 for minibuses. The new SI was issued on the same day that the world was informed of the new Omicron variant, which sent various countries into a frenzy with many imposing tougher COVID measures. Acting Prime Minister and Minister for Tourism Dr. Ernest Hille has indicated that St. Lucia will not go this route, but will instead wait for a better understanding of the variant before making a decision. It's still a little early. Um, the science says let us wait a few more days um, to really fully understand this new variant. Um, there, there's a lot of speculation as usual. There's a lot of preemptive action taken by some countries, but nobody really knows exactly the details on the new variant. Um, only this morning, I would have heard in America, they're still saying 14 to 10, 10 to 14 days before they get a full understanding of this variant. Let's hope for the best, but let's prepare for the worst. Um, St. Lucia, the arrivals are looking very good, and we certainly starting to feel a little better in terms of the economy and surely we don't want to have to suffer the consequences of lockdowns from our major source market. We really cannot afford to do so. The new variant, says SLMD President Dr. Mill Clark, comes as no surprise to the scientific community. New strains, she says, are due in part to the low vaccine uptake in some countries because of vaccine hesitancy or inequitable access to vaccine doses. The emergence of variants is a direct consequence of vaccine inequity, particularly on the African continent, and low vaccine uptake in our part of the world. So here, we've had vaccines available since February of this year, thanks to the COVAX facility, because what we want to ensure is that there is equity in vaccine distribution. Because with this pandemic, unless all of us are protected, none of us are protected. If we do not vaccinate or if vaccines aren't available, Viruses are going to continue to mutate. This virus will continue to mutate. And with this new variant, what we're seeing is that there are more, ver more sorry, mutations in the spike protein than we've seen in any other variant. And that is very concerning. Arson has been ruled out in a recent fire that destroyed the Eve Leary complex of the Guyana Police Force. Travis Chase of HGP Nightly News shares some details. Electrical issues started the fire that destroyed a section of the Eve Leary complex on November 20th. Nightly News has been able to confirm. This newscast has been reliably informed that an investigation showed that the fire started in the police living quarters, where numerous electrical and extension cords were observed in the debris. All other sources of ignition, including foul play, have been ruled out. Michael Pintard has been appointed as official opposition leader in the Bahamas. Marco City Member of Parliament Michael Pintard receiving his instruments of appointment this morning as leader of the official opposition. Present for the occasion, FNM parliamentarians and senators, as well as some formally holding those positions. Noticeably absent, however, was former Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis. Among things first on his mandate, Pintard says he is to hold the current government's foot to the fire. So we're going to be talking about the choices that the government is making in terms of how it will allocate uh, money, how it will in fact raise revenue. We have particular concerns about, uh, we believe, the ill-advised decision to uh, cause VAT to be attached to breadbasket items. We believe that, unfortunately, this is going to hurt a number of Bahamians. And we are also particularly concerned about signs of victimization in some ministries. To Minister Wilskum's credit, uh, he did the correct thing in reversing decisions that were made in urban renewal and social services, and we applaud him for that. We believe that that kind of political maturity is important, and we intend to cultivate civil discourse between those ministers who are minded to do so. And we think we have some talented persons in the PLP, and hopefully they are prepared uh, to govern for all Bahamians. Conveniently located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center, for over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen, uh, I need you to go down to Food Fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going food fair to get a grocery man. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the Food Fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand and with an order of $100 or more, 
food fair grants would deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. Their safety measures are excellent. So hold on. You just order online and food fair will deliver to you? Yep. Oh, baby, better hurry up and order, man. <laughs> I already did. They should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.